welcome to the Research VR podcast. Hey We're back. Hey. High five. High five. <laughs> nice. For the, for the first time uh, in VR, actually. We're not using a real set anymore. We we're using a virtual one in uh, something called big screen. Whoa, I'm moving the camera. Put the camera back where it was. <laughs> uh, I am your host, Oz Balabanian. This is Peter Lekoff. Um, Hello. I'm the guy with the fro, usually, in big screen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're So, yeah, the, we're doing something a little bit different today. We're in VR. The podcast is oh, not just the we, we are, yes. We are in a campfire kind of cool environment. Um, you can hear the crickets in the back in a forest and a nice fire. I don't know. I thought it was a nice scene. We have on the big screen the articles and the videos and the things that we want to talk about. So I thought I thought having this in VR would be the perfect way to kind of set a, uh, a really nice uh, podcasting environment. Wouldn't, don't you Don't you think, Peter? I honestly think this is one of the most brilliant ideas you ever came up with because it's, it's pretty this cool. is a long-term dream. <laughs> That's talking. right. That's right. We um eventually we're gonna we're gonna want to have like um, guests in here and you know invite yeah. people from all around. So this is what it looks like. We can show you the whole environment. I'm just grabbing the camera and pan, panning it around. Um, eventually, one big screen I think has uh plans on op making the rooms bigger we want to have audience members also sitting inside a big screen like watching the podcast happen i think that could that'll so be really neat does. yeah we are live on twitch on facebook oh i don't think we're live on twitter yet let's let's do that boom now we are mm -hmm. live on the tweeters um if you have questions and comments and whatnot uh drop them down below we'll be doing our best peter maybe you can be in charge of that i'm just kind of reading um having comments mm. and, and questions uh we're gonna go through the news today of what it's like uh all the sigraph news all the uh v kind of science news that yes. we've seen around vr uh Sigra there was a lot announced at sigraph that i think we we should we want people to see let's fix the camera a little bit again so, um, and at the end of the podcast, we'll talk a little bit about some housekeeping things, right, Peter? We'll talk yes. a little bit about my we trip. Of things. We've been away for a little yes. bit, so um, it's nice that we're we're finally back doing more podcasts together, and uh, let's let's do this thing. So I yes, want to absolutely. I, I want to start with um, Neurable, which I think uh, this was a big big story that came out. Uh, out of SIGGRAPH. Neurable is a company that's doing a BCI uh, attachment to VR. So the the headline here is SIGGRAPH, uh, Neurable lets you control virtual world with your mind. And so Ian Ham Hamilton was writing this. Uh, we can see a little clip of, uh, of it in action back here. Have you seen this, Peter? Have you been... What, have you been uh, I've definitely paying? checked um, the articles on it because, to be honest, I'm usually quite skeptical regards BCI because it's just not much. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, it's definitely awesome for impaired people, at least what I used to think, right? But you know, what? getting someone who is super healthy be very effective with a BCI was, in my scientific understanding, just super hard because you don't get much information per second out of a brain mm. but here it seems you can do a lot of magic things so. <laughs> there are magic things happening for people that don't know yeah. what bcis are uh it's a brain com brain computer interface so basically instead of using touch or a keyboard and mouse you can actually wear something and think about um you know think about w what you want to do and bas basically that's what they were demonstrating here is that they had a, uh, a room that you can kind of go through and you can think about what object to pick up and then you, it like you force raise it and then you can think about the enemy that you want to hit and it goes and hits that. Yep. Um, Peter, there's the also... Important part, What's up? Yes. Uh, I was the gonna important say part are those electrodes. Exactly. Right. Actually, and these are dry um, electrodes, dry right? Electrode. Yes. Uh, okay, so maybe you have one of our audience, you know, been ever to a hospital and they had to put some weird jelly on your head. Here you actually don't need it, so it's some kind of um, combination of very interesting materials like gold that are very hard pressed against your head, 
right. and then also sophisticated algorithms to clean out the noise. Let's so, let's reload um, that. I yeah. want to look at the the thumbnail again. Um, I think you can see it pretty clearly here. Yes. Let's zoom in on that. Blue, blue, blue. Whoa. Uh oh. No. My computer can't handle like, it. Like... I don't. You can't. Com you can't control my computer. Not okay, yet. Okay. Good. Good. Um, so, good. so here's the yes, thing. They, here they had two it. versions actually, or where one actually still had a, a eye tracker in there as well to help you make the selection of the place. Wow. Um, yeah, that's really neat. I thought that was really cool, and um, so it, from from the article, from what Ian was saying, it worked really well for, in terms of like selecting multiple things and then firing them at an enemy, and it seems like. There's some, you know, there, there's going to be a lot in this direction in VR going forward. I think, you know, with eye tracking being one step towards BCIs, full-on BCIs definitely. can definitely be a, 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 an interesting solution. Well, the question is how much training prior you know, to the experience right. we need and then the costs. Because I'm pretty sure that the eye tracker can be, if mass production, very cheap. But you saw even with the motive, you know, the prices weren't as cheap as... You, know, you would usually expect for something that just true. controls an additional feature in your game. So, true, true. It's definitely just... promising, but I'm really skeptical whether it will be, you know, in the next two, three years, be mass market ready. You think but so? It's definitely awesome yeah, that they managed. I, I think they were saying five years is is yeah. their um, prediction. It's a good estimate. It's yeah, a I mean, estimate. I haven't seen enough, you know, done in terms of BCIs and headsets. Uh, I know people have used Emotive, which is a kind of yes. a lower end. Not, I wouldn't even yes. call it a BCI, right? It's like a three channel or four channel. No, 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 no. They have no, no, no. They have multiple versions. They have the three channel one and the sixteen one. Oh, okay. So with the sixteen channel one, we actually benchmarked it in a lab where I worked, and we tested it with a Oculus DK2, I think. Uh, we measured how much uh, noise it creates, so the headset compared to your brain. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it did not induce any noise that would distract the brain activity to be measured. So, Very you know, cool. the 16 channels, you can do a lot of things. However, there is a sampling rate. The sampling rate is very low for the emotive, and that limits your precision, let's say. Mm. You know, how to do, you know, quotes. Yeah, right, quotes, trying to do fingers. quotes. Precision. Yeah, precision. To do quotes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like this. Precision. Um, it is an yeah, EEG, yeah. correct? Um the emotive yes. and the neurable, yes. Definitely, definitely. So, cool. Let's move on to the next... What's going on? Hold on. <laughs> um, what's going on? Do, should we talk about this? <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to this. We'll come back yeah, to the story. Yeah, we'll come back to it, yeah. Um, this way, this one is interesting. Right, we're talking about controllers and inputs. So, this controller... Here, let me switch so people can see the main. There we go. This controller changes yeah, shape to match me. virtual objects. Let's take a look. Um, <laughs> so it seems like they have this. There's so many nasty thoughts. <laughs> it is kind of weird. You can see it hardening and softening, and basically it's kind of like a variable, um, yeah. variable controller. And did you, did you notice that they have a vibe tracker at the end of it? Yes. Yes. It's 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 astonishing. Um, That's. Just beautiful. I mean, if it helps you to grasp the virtual reality, and it's not very, you know, costly, why not? Why I not? Guess. I'm yeah. a I'm a big fan of the the tactical inputs, uh, or hap yes. sorry, haptical haptical tactics. Right? Yes. Is it haptical yes. haptical tactics? Um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, kind of it it yes. has a little bit of um, real haptical like real haptics that you can feel the weight of objects as you grab them and yep. move them around in VR. So which are really neat. Um, this is from the Cornell, Cornell University. They call it the shape shifting controller. And um, yes. to be quite honest, I didn't, I don't look, I didn't look into this one too much. It seems interesting. I mean, look, I, mean I have a use case maybe, you know, you have a sword, you know, you you know some kind of weapon in your hand and you hit someone with it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and it hits against other metal and then it hardens up so you kind of feel this resistance, you know, like, woof, woof, woof. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's de definitely <laughs> useful. It would be useful for, for games and just kind of feeling things. Uh, yeah, and adult entertainment. Let's move on. You wanted to talk about this one. 
uh, theater. Definitely. You had this in the list. Hollow Viz yeah, I uses... want a video. Let's see. Let's put it up on the giant the robot screen. arms for intense VR motion. Simulated right. experiences. I mean, how? I mean, if we are considering are we in the future or not, we are in the future with that. Just show the video, and I will describe to the people who listen later on. There are like, literally two volunteers sitting in some kind of big ass roboter and it will lift them and throw them through the space so it's i'm pretty sure something like an industrial roboter that you would use usually for for building know, cars. cars yes it, yeah. it's usually where they bring it from actually these these big arms that have so it's, uh, like Kuka, six it's axes. a very famous uh, yes yeah six it's axes a, Kuka, it's a company thing. from germany that was bought by chinese investors it's actually yeah. a very famous one whenever you go to a factory you will usually see kuka roboters kuka and they're just throwing. Yes, it's, it's Puka. You will see it on the robot. It's written there actually. Mm. Uh, there. For for our podcast listeners, I wanna I wanna ask: Do you, <laughs> do you like the uh, the crickets and the 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 sound of the <laughs> of the forest in the background? Hopefully, that doesn't get annoying. Um, I think it adds some, a little admit, bit of you asked soothing. Me actually, yeah, I think it's fine. But you asked me to read the comments, and I'm actually not sure how to do that precisely. Um, well, you can probably I'll open try up. my best. Yeah, you can open up the, uh, the the show and the streams. We are so yeah, we are live on Facebook. We're live on Twitter, uh, on Twitch as well. Um, I don't know. This is our first time doing it in VR and big screen. It could potentially become yes. a kind of a platform for us to use to do these podcasts. And it could be really Definitely. easy for guests to be able to join in. So they just pop in here. They put on a they put on a headset and they pop into uh, the experience. And then so we and then down the Twitch? Uh, it's actually under my account. I didn't make one for the research VR. Oh, okay, uh, you can go to like Oz the Wizard or Wizard of Oz, one of those two. And then we are also on Facebook as well. Yes. So I would check that. Yeah. Let me check Twitter. So Facebook, and make... I'm definitely reading. Oh, cool. We are. We, it's working on Twitter. Seems like. Yay. Nice. Wonderful. Um, it's it's an experiment. It's an experiment to push the limits of podcasting further. Yeah, still making sure that we describe everything we see, so even later on when you hear it, you can enjoy it. But the video will also obviously be available for rewatching. That's right. Yes. Next topic. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> let's go. Okay, so no. this is. Let's talk a yeah. little bit about Slam, about a uh, tracking method. Not that... just Slam. Okay, it's not just Slam. It's Magic Leap Slam. It's Deep Slam. Oh, look at yes. this. This is like the, the Donald Trump pinch. Magic oh, Leap yeah. has the absolute best. That's a terrible Trump voice. <laughs> stop that. Um, stop it. You're making Mag <laughs> Magic Leap researchers revealed the slap yes. tracking algorithm. Basically, they're talking about creating a really efficient one camera solution, yes. one, one camera solution uh, for yeah. doing feature detection. In, uh, in between frames at I think 30 plus FP FPS is what they were they were claiming. Yes, and um, also on average uh, CPU, so not uh, any strong, particularly super right. computer, but actually not yeah, that, optimized that's, hardware, so just at CPU, yeah. That's very important because yeah, um, fast, lean, easily running at 30 FPS on a single CPU. Um, but yeah, so basically they're doing feature detection using t uh, a convolutional neural network, which I think the mm -hmm. CNNs means there's two neural networks that have to that exactly. um, you compare, write the results of one and you check it with a second yes. neural network. Exactly. And then I, that's how you know. That's how you know where you are. And um, yeah. and I mean, what do you what do you want to add to this, Peter? What I honestly um, um, think is the fact that they are finally showing something in the Magic Leap is astonishing. I mean, this is like the first real thing I saw from them. It's not rendered, so actually a real scientific paper that shows that they are going deep into something. And um, there was um, recently this, um, I always forget how to pronounce the company, Avagant Glyph, whatever. Av Av Avagant, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Avagan, and they also show like some kind of uh, holographic display, and I think The Verge reported on it, and everyone likes it and sees it as a competitor to Magic Leap, and I also think that in a certain way, um, the Meta 2 is a competitor to Magic Leap, I would say, however, what this article shows is they're really trying to figure out the problems of SLAM, which is basically understanding where you're in space, and this is something that I have not seen very well working except for Microsoft's HoloLens. 
So this might be actually something that really pushes them technically far away. And this is maybe what part of their weird API that they are working on. So it's maybe not even the display itself because other companies can build it too. Um, I mean, sorry, I'm trying to get, get this camera. <laughs> there we go. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was just I'm wondering like if you're trying to make some of... <laughs> No, no. Uh, we could totally stop talk talking. in. Please stop. We can totally do some sign language in here. Just bloop, 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 bloop. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. obviously, so... this is a really important problem to solve. And yeah. from what we've but seen. Also... Hmm? Yeah, no, sorry. Go I was on. saying Apple. From what we've seen from Apple with AR Kit. Yes. And also, Facebook is doing it now with their, their own internal app um, or the camera inside yeah. of the app. You can do slam with just one camera, and Apple has really shown that you can do it well. I mean, it works on a 60 FPS level. Currently, I mean, I had a 7 yes. Plus, an iPhone 7 Plus, so like mm. it has a pretty uh, a high-end spec phone, I'd say. It's not yeah. like a low-end phone, so, no. uh, but it works really well. And so I, we, I don't think Apple's mm, talked about however, how they do their slam, right? Yes, but um, Apple has definitely, I'm pretty sure about it, used uh, the accelerometer and the yes. gyroscope and magnetometer, so they have more data. So they, in this article, they just speak about the camera. It's, well, it's well, only... Apple definitely reuses everything that they can, right? That's fair. To make it more precise. Very cool. Not should yet. we... I feel like we should be posting these yeah. links. Um, we will in the show notes. We need so to you have... Can check um, our website. That's right. We'll have it in the show notes. If someone wants to help moderate the show and help with, like, links yes. and posting them in, in chat, that would be amazing. Contact us. Uh, either tweet at us at Research VR Cast or on Facebook at Research VR Podcast. Um, just comment below if you're if you're a fan of the show and you want to help us do these live yeah. streams a little bit better. It would be super awesome. Um, but yeah, the reason Absolutely. why we'd want to do these live is because we can take questions um, in a real time yes. basis. Yeah. Um, cool. Exactly. Let's uh, let's okay. chug along here. HP's new oh. commercial VR backpack. You want, you really want to talk about this, don't you? He's he's just you're such a big fan of of VR backpacks. Um, <sighs> yes, I am. I However, know. the one backpack that I own or that my company is working for owns ah. is playing with me today very much. That was loud. I'll just play it. Oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, I'm pretty. Sh I mean, you're a very big fan of wireless VR, and you're pretty. You sure, know, I, li I like I like my whatever. I like my TP casts. I don't have one, but yeah, but you I don't like have it. one <laughs> exactly, and me neither. But look and at this! This is know. ridiculous. Look yeah, at that yeah. guy! Look at that! Yeah, it's funny. I mean, it's keeping your back warm. It's you know, if you fall, it protects you. Well, the news here is that HP announced a very it, for for a VR backpack. I'd Beautiful. say it's actually pretty nice. Um, it's a dockable yes. PC. Here, let me put it on um, yeah. on the big screen here. It's a big dockable PC that, like, exactly. you put onto the the backpack part, and then mm -hmm. and then yeah, it works. It and it's like thirty three hundred dollars and, and which is fine. L let me tell you one problem. Check with that out. Oh backpacks. yeah, yeah, that is nice rendering. <laughs> totally unrealistic however <laughs> however let me tell you one problem the with the future of work what's up what's the yeah, what's the well, problem is, so, is so it the, the monitor is you can't no yeah well no not really no uh, it's you can't really unplug them and put them on your back without restarting them so if you have them in the desktop mode like you connected the power supply and then you want to run on battery you have to power them down and power them up so if this back what do you mean you can't problem, switch you can just... oh you can't exactly. switch from battery power to ac power yes yes like mm -hmm. not without rebooting or like shutting it down and this thing solves it and what they apparently announced with a dock why not it's right. awesome you know just work on a super high density nerd format cut files, the the you know? dock the, the desktop the yeah the desk the desktop to mobile aspect of it yeah. is really interesting um exactly because and it does allow you connect uh, meta yeah. 2 to it Sure. I mean, if you sure. use anything, that's a good idea, yeah. actually. That's a great idea. I'm, I'm yeah. sure. I wonder if they've, they've looked into this. Yeah. Um, next, uh, next story. I'm not. We're not staying on on stories for too long, unless we no. really, really want we to go not. deep into we are some not. Sort of not things. Not today. We are very nervous. It's our first time. <laughs> we talked um, about this. We talked about this topic long time ago. I don't about remember which G GVS or um, galvanic vestibular yes. stimulation. I think it was like yes. one of our first you. earliest episodes. Yes, I think it was. Yes, that was very, very old. Um, and now it seems to work. 
Like, I, do you want to explain it? Sir, I'll give a little background to what a GVS is. Galvanic vestibular stimulation is basically, if they've done research on this where you put electrodes around your ear, which then you mm-hmm. can stimulate your vestibular system, which is how you keep balance, right, in your ear. And uh, you can electronically control the G-forces that you can feel on your body or on your, on your head. So technically yes. what you're supposed to be able to do is like, um, is get rid of motion sickness if you're in a, let's say, plane, right? So you can actually feel the G-forces of the plane as you fly around. Um, yes. I mean, I think that's a really neat idea. I think if you can actually feel... It if, helps with motion sickness. I think it, it just helps with like full-on immersion you know, problems. Yeah, absolutely. So that's really think neat. It tickles down the motion sickness. And it kind of looks ridiculous right now, but if they can squeeze it in a nice headset, why not? Put more right. electrodes in your head. Um, Peter, can you explain to us what this four-pole system means does that mean like four axes or it looks like they have yaw acceleration um, um can or you is scroll that... down i think sure. they had... can you scroll down uh, i think they had a description there actually yeah there it is uh, i think four pole means that they have four electrodes i see so with a two pole gvs set up four... an electrode behind yeah, each exactly. ear is able to exactly. induce lateral movement or roll and three pole gvs is an additional yes. electrode on the forehead. Okay, so they have two mm-hmm. around the ear, one on the forehead, and where's yes. the fourth one? The fourth um, GVS um, the back. places two electrodes on the mastoids and ah, another okay. two the on the temples. Wait, uh, mastoids, I remember. I had to measure them when I was in <laughs> So is no, that... Mastoids are the points behind your ear, yes. So, here, let's go back let's to the uh, camera view here for our viewers. Right back here. Yes. Right back here? Yeah. Like here behind your ears, yeah. Right I can't back, really yeah. show it, but you can measure them, yeah. <laughs> I have to measure them for each subject, so yeah. See, oh, yeah, I guess you can see it right there. Um, yes, yes, you can actually. There is an electrode falling, you know, through his ear, and on the other hand, I guess, behind the, his left and, part and of the, the temples. Face, yeah. Doesn't look like there's one on the forehead. Temple, yeah. So it's one, two, no, three, and on four. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, no, this is interesting because. Uh, what I remember of Lucky Palmer, like at OC one or two, was talking about, like oh, yes. how there was such uh, variability between uh, people and the uh, the level of how intense you need to have GVSs yep. for each person. Yep. For so for some people, he said that the stimulation would like feel like nothing for some people, and for others, you would feel like it's frying their ears or something like scary like that. Um, so that's. <laughs> He kind of tried to put no. it into it when that question was asked. But it looks like there's people that are still interested in it. Uh, about a year ago, we actually had a story coming out of Mayo Clinic working on something called... Oh, what was it called? Um, do you remember that they also were working on a four-axis four, kind of four axis GVS system? Um, I have a small blackout. I don't remember, honestly. Well, I'm, we'll link to it as well. But yeah, it seems like we'll the researchers it, definitely, yeah. are really interested. Anyway, we haven't heard anything from them ever since they announced it. Let's see. Let's see what will come of this. Uh, exactly. I mean, just imagine you will have a headset with uh, this system, with additional BCI, with eye trackers, with some kind of smell inducing. Because there are systems that at least try to induce smell. I tried recently one that was paired with a Gear VR. It was awful, but hey. With a Gear VR. Fine. Yeah, How many... can, you know, there was a movie, I watched the Ratatouille, and there was like 12 smells it was trying to induce. Hmm. It was a big box behind me blowing smells. It was fun. But, but just imagine combining everything together. You have like a room full of gear worth, I don't know, half a billion, and it creates a full Matrix experience. <laughs> we are coming close to that. At least yeah. technically possible. That's true. Yes, uh, this is actually a very awesome article. Moving forward, we have yes. the v- VR-based treatment for vision disorders shows positive results in peer review yes. study. So this is about the company it's called so Vivid Vision. Wonderful. Go, for, go for it. Do you, do you want to talk about Vivid Vision? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, so not so much about the company. I actually never heard of them before. I have to oh, really? check them. But the article describes um, the well, before Sorry. Itself. Before you move forward. Yes. Uh, ten episodes ago, when we review, uh, when we talked to Chris Miranda from Enter VR, 
uh, his podcast. He actually works for Vivid Vision now, or he has been for like the past year. Oh, or two. nice. Um, and yeah, they 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 know a lot about uh, how to use VR for um it for seems, eye therapy, it seems so. vision therapy. I, I mean, the experiments that they did is really smart design. So the problem here is that the patients they were working with apparently have a dominant eye and a not dominant eye, so the brain kind of mm. ignores one of the eyes. Most people are right, right the eye one. Right, if you're right-handed, you're that usually you right-eyed. Exactly. Right. You, you can kind of check it with those finger tricks, but uh, it seems that for certain patients it's unhealthy, so like you're really ignoring one eye mostly, and that's not good because your stereoscopic vision is impaired. impaired. And what they did is they used the fact that the screen that exists as uh, HMD is showing you two different pictures to each eye, and they showed the cues for winning the game only to the passive eye. So your brain had to focus on the passive eye. So what do you mean by cues? As in, eye. you what kind of like visual cues mm. they were getting is yes. what we're seeing on on screen, basically, like exactly. Okay, exactly. so th they're training the the so, individual to use their non-dominant eye to yes, exactly. For what exactly? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know. So the brain, um, you know, uses a non-dominant eye again, and you have proper stereoscopic vision. So I know I know Vivid Vision was into correcting lazy eye. That was um, a lot yes. of kind of what the, I mean. Is this part of their the, th the therapy that they're developing for that, or I mean, what's the benefit I of, of yes, training yes. your non-dominant eye? Uh, well, uh, give me a second. I think they mentioned lazy eyes. Yes, they do. Yes, lazy. So study the study calls existing yeah. lazy eye and treatments. Yeah. Using eye patch or the dominant eye or blurring it with liquid drops, penalizing therapies, uh, penalizing. So yeah, it looks like before without VR, they used to literally blur your eye, your dominant eye, with yeah. liquid, yeah. and or like put an eye patch on it. Um, but yeah, it seems like do, using. Um, how are you yeah, fine over there? Um, seems like I mean I'm not seeing a big difference between the left and the right eye. It seems like the cues are in both eye I mean, here at least. Um, Maybe it's not in the video, the... it doesn't show it properly. Well, it, it should, right? Because that's the right eye and this is the left eye. Um... Uh, wait, wait. I oh, yeah. Difference. So there, there is a big difference here where that cue yes. is not in the right eye. Yes, and, exactly. And... Okay. So that's that's really interesting. It, there, what is it called? But I really um, enjoyed ocular... the article because it, yeah, yeah but, but it shows that you can revise the brain with VR. Yeah. Sure, you can train so the brain to be to be better using VR. Yes, that's for sure. Well done. Um, we'll keep our eyes on uh, Vivid Vision for the time being. We should see if we can get him on in here. Actually, either oh, dominant eyes. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep I'll keep my right dominant eye into it. Um, yeah, maybe we can get do an episode with. Stop laughing. It's not that funny. <laughs> I'm not laughing. <laughs> <Sorry. No. laughs> uh, I would like what the point I'm trying to make is that I would like to do an episode with them and kind of dive in yes. deeper into it. And we I would probably, love to do it too. And we probably will. Moving yes. on. This was cool. OptiTrack is making moves in VR. Um, and they have been for a while. Seems like they're, they've they made a full body tracking solution by creating these pucks. Oh, does, it, does that look familiar? Does that look familiar? Hmm. Let me just scratch my beard here. Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it seems like with the OptiTrack solution, are, they're an IR-based solution, right? Where basically you have, like, a ton of cameras around you um, yes. on poles. Are, is it the IR wavelength bandwidth? I think, yes. Um, it's, it's a very high-end tracking solution. A lot of mocap companies Definitely. use it. A lot of um, everything before yeah, the live tracking. Filming. Even for filming uh, cameras yeah. for people, mocap, everything, they used to use OptiTrack and Vicon. Um, and so OptiTrack is trying to stay relevant to the Lighthouse tracking, which, I mean, Lighthouse is good, but it's not always the best when yes. it comes to tracking everything. I mean, obviously it's scalable, yes. but um, so they are showing mm. off that you can do full body things. I think they had a second story as well. Um, right, the Rift face pad. Yes. We've actually even seen Facebook using OptiTrack in their own. What are you laughing at? Really? Yeah. 
Um, Facebook. No, I'm, 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 I'm really laughing just at the fact that I have a, a pointer. So to the audience, it's my first time on big screen. I actually really enjoy it. And it confuses me a lot. It's pretty, I mean, it's cool. You can point to things in here and it works. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, the, so back to the point that I was trying to make, Facebook, when they were yes. showing off their glove trackers, uh, people wearing you know, yes. gloves, they, it was fully OptiTrack based tracking, um, which just means that their experiment, like they're not completely tied to the two cameras that the Rift uses, you know, like they're actually not tied to that at all. They're trying to get away from that as, as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, they want to have a standalone device, right? Yeah. I mean, it's all going to be inside out based. Um, Coming forward, doing. so yeah, OptiTrack is really good at doing. Um, I've seen, I mean, I've seen a lot of installation-based VR use OptiTrack and Rift specifically, and VR backpacks on top of that. And uh, seems like this faceplate is going to make yeah. that a little bit easier for um, manufacturers or, or uh, vendors to actually be using OptiTrack. Does it mention a price? Yes, seven hundred forty-nine yeah, for for the faceplate. Yeah, which, nothing. I mean, you think. 749 is very expensive for a headset accessory, oh, okay, but like guess, yeah. when you're paying what, how much do you pay for OptiTrack? Like 15, 20 grand or something yes, for a system? Um, $749 at is least, nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had actually a link in the notes for today's episode from Kickstarter. I, did, I, right saw, I saw the Kickstarter. I didn't see how that was relevant though. Should we pull it up? Oh, there's a new backpack. There's that new. Um, yeah, as a woman. The urban backpack. I think. Um, because in a certain way, you know, the body tracking that we had uh, one news before is also apparently going to work out with those weird shirts that you can get on Kickstarter. I just am fascinated by the fact that there are more and more people going for this electrode bending technology. Do you mean so this? Ever actually... Is this what you mean? No, no, no. no this no, is what no, you no. sent me. No, no, no. That was no, terrible. No, no, there's a second one. Oh, there's a second one. Yes, there's a second, oh, okay, there's a second there one. That was exactly for the fact that it's terrible. I East. actually wanted to discuss how terrible it is. Let's see what this is. East. Oh my god, it's so loud. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus killed my eyes. Uh, yeah. um, let me... So, it's yeah. marketing. So, what we see right now, to anyone who's not seeing, there's they can see it. in the video putting up... Yeah, but I mean, some people will All right. listen later, right? We do have a podcast as well. Just yeah, yeah. So, so there are people wearing a weird jacket. Or it some looks kind of like a that has electrodes inside. Right. Jumper. Sure, you can call it a bodysuit. A bodysuit, basically. Yeah, it has some kind of device on top of it that they claim has just Bluetooth two point one, which I don't believe. It sounds very old, but the technology works basically exactly the same as the Manus VR gloves, where you have electrodes that you bend, you basically stretch when you move yourself, mm -hmm. and it changes the resistance. And through that, and machine learning, as they claim. Interesting. They so they're not how you move. they're not doing points of track points of re reference points on the body to track. They're no. Nope. They're using the 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 quality of bending of fabric, right? The yes, qualities of exactly. bending. Um, okay, that's that's an interesting approach. I haven't seen that. I wonder how accurate it could be. Oh, there seems like there's a big no latency between <laughs> what he's doing and what the the character is doing. Um, I, I mean, okay, we've the seen. Again, comes through the fact that you know they kind of suck at software level right now how much do they want to how much are they charging for this let's see because um, like there's a good I amount think... of of body suits like cheaper mocap yes. including perception neuron including the rococo suit yes. including um yes. a few other ones that we keep seeing at these conventions um, yeah, as you say there's really a big uh, delay I think they want 500 or 600 dollars on Kickstarter, but it's definitely a developer kit. So don't get it if you're just a consumer. Who who who's their target it audience? Maybe. Like, what do they want to do with this? Oh, oh gosh, who knows? I'm if just skeptical. You're asking questions. That, <laughs> well, I'm skeptical as well. I just like the idea that someone scaled up the Manus glove basically to the whole body. So what do you mean? I, so the the Manus gloves is all are also based on yes, like stretch fabric. Absolutely, you have uh, electrodes on each finger, and when you stretch the finger, it changes the resistance. And then they have basically the gyroscope, or basically detection of the thump. In addition, I think in the newest version, I didn't try the newest version, I think, but they definitely use uh, electrode stretching method, okay. changing resistance. Okay, that's cool. Which that's is cool. also maybe an approach. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's the future. Maybe not. Don't give them too much money. Oh. Okay, I'm at, finally I'm looking at the comments on my phone, <laughs> for Facebook at least. Oh. Um, 
Peter, oh, you uh, okay. totally forgot about our audience. Uh, Falco Zint, if yeah, you're still he... watching, he saw he says that oh. the XMGs are a better choice. That's the those are the VR backpacks that Peter uses. <sighs> uh, exactly, I use them. I love them. And I don't want to say anything and, bad. And, Hi, Falco. Great that you tune in on every episode I'm doing. Yeah, thank you, Falco. <laughs> He's also asking if we can turn off the background noise. Unfortunately, I don't think we can in this environment. If we change to a different mm-hmm. environment, we mm-hmm. win. But we'll do that for the next episode. I just wanted to see how a yes. campfire would do. Um, I mean, we might even make a special <laughs> one for podcasts later down the line. That would be really cool. Yeah. Like a special research VR cast, like set and everything and like have the logo in the middle and look really official it'd be nice um let's move on to next story what else do we have here um blah 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 yeah. i saw I, nvidia announced some interesting things yes um, this is lovely dude they do such a bad job of like explaining things <laughs> they <laughs> no, do, they're marketing but it's super thing. tough to explain it I guess I like I had I mean, to do honestly, this over and over again, and it seems like Ian, who who has written the article, did less of the writing and more of just like, look, I'm just gonna copy paste yeah, the way they <laughs> they exactly. try to explain things. Uh, but I mean, come on, how how easy it is to explain light fields and different ways of seeing objects in front of you? It's just super confusing. Uh, I had to it. listen to our own light field episode three times, so I finally understand what it is. <laughs> yeah, Dom, that's that was a, good a very episode. good one. That was a really good. Which... It's a very good one, but I still was not be able to understand it that quickly. Are you so, talking about um, the one with Ryan Dam from Visby that we talked about light fields, or yes. your episode yes. with Dominic from Nvidia? No, 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 no. Definitely, definitely yours. Mine was lame. I mean, not lame, but <laughs> mine was not that deep. But yeah, you guys didn't talk about light fields as much. So, no, <laughs> not really. Not. Um, going back to this, it seems like Nvidia research is um, trying to fix the virgins and accommodation problem of your eyes of VR. So basically, now we've talked about this before. We'll re- quickly explain what it is. The um, Let's go back to this camera here. Currently in VR headsets, you can only focus using virgins, which is basically um, in our headsets, your eyes are focused at infinity, but like if there's a close object, your two eyes can shift and look at them but it still doesn't exactly feel like the same type of focus. You also can't, like, things don't go blurry when they're out of focus in VR yet because you're just not focusing that way. Not yet. This seems to fix that. Can you move your screen, sir? You're blocking the audience. (laughs) I'm Um, trying to read the comments from the (laughs) mighty audience. Um, So... Previously, before, we've talked a little bit about the Avagant Glyphs mixed reality um, light field display that they were showing. We had a, a great video about that, actually. Um, but uh, what NVIDIA is trying to do is seems like they're using some interesting terminology. Let's see what, what they were calling it. Yes, they are. Uh, Very uh, cryptic. They have two things. The one is using a transparent holographic back projection screen. What, what does that mean, Peter? What, what is a holographic back projection? I think what it means is that you have some kind of uh, screen in front of you and the projection is behind it, projecting on the screen, and it's holographic because it's transparent. Right, so it's a reflection onto a, like a Fresnel, yes. right? It looks like... Yes, something it's... like that, yeah. Right, and then... Yeah, I mean... I would say that this is like the screen, and then the projection is somewhere here, projecting on top of it. I'm nice just photo. wondering how they're adjusting for different focal focal uh, planes. It doesn't seem like they talk um, about that much. They also talk a little bit about not really. adding chromatic aberration. I wouldn't. I didn't think this was something you'd want to add. Um, I, I thought this was something you'd want to get rid of. But it says this administration makes use of the research. Um, in evidence to support the idea that our brains use what a photographer would call chromatic aberration, causing colored fringes to appear on the edges of an object to help understand where an image is in space. So they're saying the you would get some kind of chromatic aberration around objects, and I guess light kind of bends in a certain way that would do that. I don't, I don't understand this this paragraph that they're saying. Mm, they're I have no here. idea what they're talking about. To yeah, me. I think we know a fair to bit me about. It sounds very strange. Vision, but I haven't heard about chromatic aberration in in your real eye. Me neither. Right? Me yeah. neither. No. 
NVIDIA marketing team, do better. I want to <laughs> I want to understand what you guys are doing yeah, here. Please, please include like a PDF with 20 pages of scientific paper we can read and understand. That would, that would be nice. Because Maybe this we'll nonsense come. is tough. Uh, the second demonstration as as I have... uh, is, let's go back to the big screen. Second demonstration, Membrane VR, a collaboration between University of North Carolina. They, um, they use a deformable membrane mirror for each eye that in a commercial system can be adjusted based on where a gaze tracker detects a user is looking. Um, and so deformable membrane mirror, that's, a, that's, that's how you have a um, variable, uh, variable focal plane. So I don't know how they're act it is a variable membrane. <laughs> they didn't talk about that either. But I can understand the principle I don't know. how it all works. Um, it, it looks like, I don't know, do you remember this other um, holographic display they showed like three, four years ago at Zigra that was showing you different focal uh, perspectives, yeah. basically merging screens? The one with Stanford? Seems like the, yeah, exactly. And this seems to be like the development of it. I don't know. Mm. It looks super geeky. Yes, indeed. Well, I think that's all the I news we had for um, for that we wanted to cover, at least. Uh, exactly. But yeah, back to oh, dude, why did you pin that comment? <laughs> uh, back to our the podcast here. If I, I just want to say hi to everyone to that's that's watching and has joined that is missing us because we were we've been gone for a little bit. Um, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. But I had the reason. <laughs> We'll do a little bit of housekeeping now. Talk a little bit about uh, the podcast, where we are, what we've been up to. Um, this concludes the news <laughs> section of the podcast. Section. Yes. I should. I should check. I should check Twitch as well. See where we are with everything. Yeah, I will. I will definitely be next time better prepared to open different tabs and train myself as Oculus uh, to be faster reading comments or maybe hack myself as other screen in my office so i can with one eye the dominant one reads the comments <laughs> the <one> dominant <laughs> receives the VR in the well, that's funny <laughs> um well let's uh mm. let's talk a little bit about what we're, we what we've been up to exactly you have been on a very interesting trip haven't you yeah we ha i have been um i uh let's see and get the camera oh, yeah, we can put it back to where it was sorry i have to, to tell ah. Aaron that he's right now not in this virtual room it looks very very um how would i say it um suspicious when ah. and i have a total matrix style feeling that the world is around me is fake like it's well it like, is I know it's are. fake. It is, it is but but just it's just like I don't know. It feels super intense. Like, and I, I didn't experience VR as a sense as right now. It's like my first time spending with someone in VR, right? Like an hour maybe already, and like trying to interact also with computers and talking about topics, and knowing that someone is listening. It's, it's overwhelming. I think VR finally reached my heart deep down. You're saying this Whatever. experience right now, yeah. this this moment, yes, is a very significant. It's one moment. of the deepest VR experience I ever had. Honestly. Yeah. No. I think social experiences in VR are very very yes. significant I want to talk a little bit about Echo Arena and how incredible of an experience how polished it is and how it does so many things right um, some of the things what that we've it? we've we've talked about here in terms of cognitive load in terms of presence that how presence inducing high cognitive load tasks are um, and as well as just other layers of polish. Sorry, I keep scratching my nose and you can see that because <laughs> I'm holding the touch. One thing that Rifts needs to figure out is how to like not have little hair sticking out and touching noses. It gets so scratchy and itchy. I just keep playing with my nose. Yes. Yes. Um, back I to have the same problem, actually. <laughs> yeah, you can understand. Armenians have big noses and it's hard to do that. Um, back to the topic at hand. We were... Uh, mm -hmm. Echo Arena is an incredible experience where basically it's like soccer in space except it's not soccer it's frisbee that you have to fly around to in 3d and and grab um frisbee and throw it and but the reason why it's well it's so good is because somehow they got the 
IK, the inverse, inverse kinematics, to look really, really, yeah. really good. They got the movement uh, system to be excellent because you can grab th things and th propel yourself off, and then you have thrusters to um, to kind of adjust your 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 uh, you know vector, and then you can also grab other people and like slingshot off of them. So transfer and transfer of energy. Unfortunately, they don't slow down, which is an interesting choice because I guess that just kind of keeps okay. things going quickly but like there's there's a lot of really interesting physics that you can use in there and the game is just so <laughs> this guy um <laughs> the game is just so immersive because you're just constantly like like flying back and forth between the field and um the, I like this part about it that after you score, kind of like in soccer, you can kind of like run and do a flare move, you know, like, oh, like put your hands up in there or like take your shirt off, something stupid like that. And then all the other players come and like hug you. That's essentially what happens in this game is like as soon as people score, they like start flying, they like do a flip and they're like pew, pew, pew. And then all the whole team or the enemy team comes up to them and like either con congratulates them or like punches them or, you know, it's like really 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 cool because it has the same mm -hmm. interactions that you would see uh, a real sport having love that yeah. and it's just been the one kind of experience that i've been wanting to go back to um and re-experience i it's 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 fantastic it's free on the oculus store you can even try it on a vive using revive downloaded echo arena <laughs> um that's really cool Nice. Um, another thing I want to talk about is Chroma Labs. It's not out yet, but it, it is a trip and a half. Let me see if I can find the Steam page for it. Um, Chroma Lab. They've teased it on Reddit before. Uh, where is it? Store page. Um, hmm. It is basically a particle... You, you mess around with particles in VR and you pu you put music to it and it's all audio reactive and it's just like it's kind of like an acid trip in VR it's it's kind of incredible um, no real science research VR reason why I want to talk about it I think it's just a really hypnotizing experience um, it's it's not out yet but it will be very soon oh Sarah <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's just commenting on the podcast Oh, nice. Hey, Sarah Lisa Vogel. Good to see you. Yeah. Um, I guess we were kind of talking about the summer a little bit. I, uh, I, yeah, ended, exactly. up, I ended up going... You traveled. I did do some traveling. I ended up going to, like, Iceland, Sweden, um, Germany, Croatia, Armenia. Mm -hmm. um, most of it solo with myself and my drone. <laughs> and uh, I went and visited you for a little bit in Ger Germany. And you did. You, you came to Berlin. Berlin had a great time there so we haven't really had Definitely. as much time to do any podcasting fortunately but we're back um and come on we deserve the summer break so we do we do we didn't really it was an impromptu uh break but but it's but it was much needed i'd say yeah um i mean we're here just for fun you know talking about the newest news and making sure people know interesting things but also in the summer usually not much is happening anyway so yeah, I'd say it's kind of. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, it was a really awesome project that I went on to Armenia, um, with the reality. I mean, you did some awesome shooting with a drone. It's Lo ridiculous. Lots of videos. Do. Anyone just Google his name and um, check it out. It's on Maybe Vimeo we'll actually. To, we'll I'll, I'll, videos. I'll link Perfect. to the videos on Vimeo. Uh, I did a lot it's of drone gorgeous. kind of videos. But the exciting part actually is that I, I went to Armenia with the realities.io people. Uh, so yes. David F Fitz, uh, Fitzwalder, he, he's like one of the biggest experts in photogrammetry and, and, and yes. their app is free yeah, on definitely. Steam. You should try it out if you have a VR headset. And it's just like yes. the most incredible 3D scans of environments that you can walk through in VR. Yes. Um, and we went and captured you feel really- feel like you're there. Yeah, they're very good you at just really like capturing. You feel like there because the texture is perfect. You know, and the mm -hmm. texture is literally as it would be. The meshes look incredibly good, and it's all made from photos. So it's, I don't know, it's mind blowing. I don't know how they are doing it, but it's ridiculous. There's good. some clever like lighting um, effects as well at certain places, like God rays and and dust particles in places yes. where it really gives some life to the environment. Um, yes. 
So we went and captured these really, really old Armenian her like heritage sites. And, you know, it's kind of a passion project that I was going to do by myself with my own drone. But we ended up going with like tons of drones and cameras and, and capturing these places. Um, I don't have too much to show yet, but more more on that coming. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that was a really, really awesome pro project that I was in. Um, yeah. yeah. Peter, anything that you want to share from your your side of life? Um, uh, my side of life? Uh, well, I'm, you know, just going on with my life. I meet from time to time awesome people in this rainy Germany. Sometimes, you know, people come from US to visit. Sometimes I'm in Berlin seeing some nice people. And actually, there were a lot of VR conferences and there are going to be more conferences, which I hopefully can manage to score one or another very interesting interview. I've definitely recorded two on the digility which will be at some point released. We need just to process them, and in between the live episodes, we'll definitely push them out. Um, and actually, looking at all the huge amount of uh, industrial-oriented startups, but also game startups, and in general VR-focused uh, interest, it's highly fascinating. There was recently even an article, um, I think an upload, about 450 VR startups in Europe or something like that. Mm. Some kind of VR found uh, company, I think, found it out or did a research. And so the economy is growing and that means also that the community is growing. And for me, the community of the VR you know, experience is like, so far has been like the most interesting part because people are just super enthusiastic. And that means I'm usually even more on the go, you know, visiting more events, meeting more people, which yeah, you do, a little you do bit tough go points. to a lot of these events, lots of VR yeah, conferences it's awesome popping to up. Meet everyone. Yeah, it is. It's um, crazy. I met a good amount of fans at just random and just listeners yeah. of these podcasts. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. The research VR community is 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 pretty widespread. Um, yes. like sp spanning yes. continents and countries and lots of uh, a lot, basically, all the major uh, and smaller VR companies that at least I know of, like at least the, either they've exactly. heard of the podcast or they've like active listeners yes. to it. Uh, so and that's I'm incredibly also trying awesome. To evangelize for it, so I was recently giving a lecture for fifty or forty, I think it was forty engineers, and the engineers study engineering uh, in Paderborn, but they actually have a class on VR and IR for engineering. And I had the honor to give the last uh, lecture for them, you know, just show the possibility where the future is going. And right. I obviously also, you know, made advertisement for the podcast. So if anyone from them is listening, yeah. you know, welcome, listen to more. And in general, spread the That's word. Right. I mean, we're just two people. If you think that what we are doing is at some point interesting and you like it, don't only rate us on iTunes, but also spread the word. Make sure that people are aware of it. And also, please tell everybody at some point that... It's not important to listen to every episode. Listen to those that are interesting for sure, you. Sure, yeah. There's like no pressure. You know, what? it happens to a lot of people. They open a podcast, there are already 40, 50 episodes. They think, oh, I need to listen through every one of those. Well, the, no, yeah, not it depends. Kind of podcast. Depends. I think we try and title things so that it's, you know, if you want exactly. if it interests you per topic, you can yeah. go into it. If you're ever interested, pick it up. It. If you like it, listen to them all. Um, hopefully, we'll be doing a lot yeah. more of these down the line. Um, and I think and a more regularly paced thing. Uh, hopefully I, I will have a regularly paced day that we can even stream these so people can, you know, you kind of me. schedule them and, and drop in. Uh, you can either on Facebook, Twitter, or Twitch um, on the podcast side. So if you Everywhere. are a listener of the podcast and you're subscribed to it, fo you know, follow our channels and you'll be able to see this happening live. Um, I, I know on Twitter you can turn yes. on live notifications. On Facebook you can turn on also live nice. notifications. Um, and just get notified. So, anything else you want to cover, Peter? Hmm. I think this has been a good sure. uh, little reintroduction. Yeah, I, I, I really like it. Do you like it? Yeah, exactly. Cool. That's, that was my point. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm really fascinated because, to be honest, I really got used to speaking in front of a mic. And I really don't have any emotions, like strong emotions, when I have a guest or I talking with you sure. over Skype, record things. But this episode today made me, I don't know. Considering that we should do more of those live things and more of those live things in VR, because it triggers a lot of emotions in me and makes me very interested in it. <laughs> it's a good way to put it. It's tough to describe, I don't know. It's a good way to put yeah, it, Peter. I'm, triggers I'm, I'm lots of emotion. All righty. Yeah. Let's do it. Where's our outro? Where's okay. our outro? 
Goodbye, everyone. There's our outro music. Oh, yeah. I know. It's playing. <laughs> Thank you.